Panthers, what up? This Sunday's game at the bank, Minnesota Vikings in town. I think that's the Panthers' best chance to get their first win of the season. What's going on? You watch Panthers post of Phil Perkins. Thanks for joining. Well, it's called the Toilet Bowl if you want. You got two 0 3 teams taking each other on at the bank. It's the Adam Thielen blood and guts game taking on his former team. But most importantly, it's the Bryce Young is back and most likely starting on Sunday, catapulting the Carolina Panthers to their first win of the season bowl. So it might not be the best start to the season, 0 and 3 leading up into this in the offseason. Of course, hope is a plenty during the offseason, but we were sold by the coaches, the GM, the team owner, players analysts on NFL Network before preseason started that the Carolina Panthers could be a dark horse playoff team and it still could happen but I think now I think after three weeks heading into the fourth potentially facing 0-4 right down the barrel that I think we realize that the Carolina Panthers aren't as good as we thought they were going to be it's going to take some time and we need to be patient who better to say this than the greatest Panther of all time fight me on it and Cameron Jarrell Newton here's what he had to say in the KJ Wright podcast does he have somewhat of enough around no. him not even close. No. I see the receiver skill set, yes. You see the Thielen, you see Clark. But from top to bottom, for him, it's not, it's not set up for him to be successful, especially not his rookie year. Everything that Carolina is and building, will they get to that point? Yes. But right now, throwing you know, him into the wolves like and expecting instant success, that's not the quarterback position. Unfortunately. Our situation is good enough for Ace Boogie to say that, that, okay, he believes in Bryce. That, number one, is all I need to hear. I don't need to hear from anybody on X, anybody on TikTok, anybody on NFL Network. If anybody knows the Carolina Panthers and the market and the team itself, it's Cam Newton and Steve Smith as well. And remember Steve Smith at Bryce Young's Pro Day. He looked at him and he said, if I was still playing, I want you to be my quarterback. You are a franchise quarterback. Cam Newton saying the same thing. He likes Bryce, but then he admits in that episode that the Carolina Panthers, in this very iteration of the 2023-24 Carolina Panthers, they don't have the infrastructure and the pieces around them to make them successful today. They don't have it. They just don't have it. And, you know, they talk, KJ Wright talked about how when Cam Newton came into the league, he had Jay Stu, he had uh, D'Angelo Williams, he had Greg Olson, he had Steve Smith, he had uh, Ryan Khalil, they had Jordan Gross, they had all these guys just ready for a guy who was already 6'6", 280 at the time, just taking over the league. So it didn't take much for him to just do what he did. And you saw that with Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson's not blowing up the stat book in the air. His first touchdown was a rushing touchdown. He's mini Cam Newton. Cam Newton 1.5, not 2.0 all the way. Uh, so he just doesn't have the pieces around him right now. He does shout, shout out Adam Thielen, DJ Chark. He called him Clark, but whatever. But he even said that, just give it time. It's not a right now thing. It's now time for him to put him in the right situation and just, you know, slow the game down for him a little bit, uh, make him confident with his tight ends, maybe some guys who might be on the team long term, maybe at the Jonathan Mingo. You know, I don't see Adam Thielen with this team by the time Bryce reaches his absolute peak. In fact, I don't see Adam Thielen, DJ Chark, Burr, I don't see, I, I see, honestly, Jonathan Mingo, and that's it. Really, I don't know if Terrace Marshall Jr. is long for this team. I really don't think that. Uh, I think Hayden Hurst could be on the team for a bit. Uh, just because I think tight ends can sustain a career a little bit better, especially if they're bigger bodies. They can physically sustain a, their career a bit longer than that. You saw Rob Gronkowski kind of hobbled off. But either way, I think I believe in what Cam said, that the team is going to get better every single year. He believes uh, that the team is the right team to, to build around him uh, the proper pieces. Maybe not this year, because I think, I think someone mentioned that, Carolina Panthers trading draft assets right now for a proven veteran might not be the best thing. Might not be the you want to build the team with Bryce, a youth movement with Bryce. So you already got the Jonathan Mingos, you know, you got uh, Chandler Zavala, you got Iki Aquano on the offensive line, and you just got to continue building. Maybe it's more speedsters. You take a look at what the Houston Texans are doing for CJ Stroud. They got a guy in Tank Bell, uh, who is Tank Dell or Tank Bell who is a speed star at the University of Houston, and then Nico Collins. We hate on it, but he's another young guy in his third year, advancing a bit more than Terrace Marshall is. So he has these two burner wide receivers who are young, and they grow together. He doesn't have D-Hop. He doesn't have that right now. D-Hop's in Tennessee right now, and is it really helping him that much? No, it's not. Game itself. I think the Carolina Panthers had it pretty tough taking on the last couple of teams. Obviously, you're in Atlanta, who is a proved team, you know, a darling in a lot of people's eyes in the offseason and currently. Uh, you take on the New Orleans Saints at home, and, you know, 
It is what it is. They, they were just better than us at that moment. And then you went to Seattle. Always a tough place to be. They have that rivalry between the two teams. And, you know, they held in tight for most of the time with the red rifle and the red machine gun at the helm. Bryce Young standing on the sidelines. Those are three pretty tough matchups right now. Two division, and then you got at, at a away game in the Pacific Northwest. I think now it could be a better situation for maybe – a get-right game for the Carolina Panthers offense. They're playing a Minnesota Vikings defense that's kind of ranked towards the bottom half of the league in terms of defense. And I think someone like a Bryce Young could find those mismatches. And I think after seeing what Andy Dalton did, throwing 58 times or 53 times or whatever it was, he's like, dang, I want to play that kind of game. And I would love to see that. I'd love to see Bryce Young just to play reckless and play fun, play free. He talked about during his press conference that he only worries about the people in the building. He doesn't hear any of the noise on the outside. I kind of don't believe him because uh, Thomas Brown, the offensive coordinator, said that Bryce Young had his best practice ever with the Carolina Panthers in terms of being the maestro on the team. Something tells me he is listening to the noise a little bit. Someone's playing a little couple clippets of what people are saying about him, that he's a bust. Oh, taking a look at, uh, you know, C.J. Stroud. He's awesome. Anthony Richardson's in concussion protocol, but he's huge. He's going to be fine. Bryce Young is a bust. He's a capital B bust, and I'm sure he's watching some of that. I know he says he does not. But I'm pretty sure he is. And I think he's going to come out fire. I don't think he's going to be shy. I think he saw how it was done uh, with Andy Dalton in a regular season game in a hostile environment. I could, I think he's going to step up uh, in terms of guys who are also not injured. Frankie Lou, he practiced. That's good. CJ Henderson practiced because that defense got beat up in Seattle. And they got to come back strong against the Minnesota Vikings team and because they got guys in Justin Jefferson. And they got that new cat out of USC transfer out of Pittsburgh. Completely forget his name uh, right now. Uh, you don't care about this, but... He's on my fantasy team. Uh, but without J.C. Horn, you need somebody, even any warm body, whether it's C.J. Henderson or Troy Hill, somebody to step in place and try to just be available and just give guys rest, even if they're doing cornerback by committee. Make it happen. Also, just realize, shout out to Sean Jackson. Still playing. It's week four, and he is healthy, coming off an Achilles injury, and he hasn't come off the field, and he's doing great. So shout out to Deshaun Jackson. Um, but, yeah, so keep – pounding i guess i i mean what else can you do what else can you do i think bryce is gonna come out and i think it's a, it's a friendly environment and they're saying there's gonna be a lot of purple out there so it's not gonna be that noisy not gonna be that quiet but i think he's gonna come in focused and i think he's gonna be good to go i think he wants i think he wants that call from cj so i'll be like dang man you balled out same way bryce Young most definitely called his boy in texas and be like hey you did great Shout out to you. Love you. Blah, blah, blah. I, I see Bryce Young coming out firing. I think for Adam Thielen, he he had a great game against Seattle. I think the same thing is going to happen against the Minnesota Vikings. Justin Jefferson is going to have a field day most likely. As long as we just keep the team one-dimensional, just try to shut him down as best we can. I don't think the Minnesota Vikings can beat us with their other receivers. Um, DJ Hawkerson, I guess, is still on the team. So that's a problem. Uh, that's a problem in the tight end position. But that's what the likes of Jeremy Chin and Frankie Louver are there for, to, to shut down the, the tight end. Got to stop the gosh darn run defense. Uh, Seattle Seahawks just bullied our team, literally sent our team into another universe in San Franklin Jr. Um, so Xavier Woods also as a San Franklin is going to be in there for safety. So just buckle up. Buckle up your chin strap a little bit tighter. Make sure to ready to get down to, to lay down the boom. Um, yeah. Do I think the Panthers, could this be a get right game for them? You could say the same thing about the Vikings. This could be a get right game for their defense. And they shut down a team with a rookie quarterback you know, and, a, and an offensive coordinator and a head coach who are still trying to figure things out. But I think the Panthers win. It's a fan account, baby. I think the Panthers win 18 to 15. <laughs>